All right, we are live and recording, and uh, we've got a good crowd here tonight, and uh, more than I expected, actually. So, welcome to the to the broadcast. This is going to be a fun night, and I I really love uh, this day in particular. And I wondered why when I set initially, I said this is going to be Wednesday, oh. <laughs> and, and we had it scheduled for Wednesday, <clears throat> and then one of the one of the members. Uh, I was just doing everyday stuff, and one of the members said, "Hey, are you going to show up at the meeting?" I go, "Wait a minute, I scheduled it to Saturday," and I don't know why because I'm normally paying attention more than that. But I scheduled it for Saturday, and we had a little chat, like a courtroom of having pop up chat that we're doing for maybe half hour. That was fun. That was good. Uh, but I didn't know what was happening necessarily with with today, Pentecost. It's the three, three thousand three hundred thirty-third Pentecost. Just imagine what that looks like. Three, 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 three years ago, three thousand three hundred thirty years, thirty-three years ago was the first Pentecost. Isn't that up? Isn't wow. that something? The outpouring yes. of the Holy Spirit. And then, secondly, we had SpaceX launch today. And the name of the 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 did you guys watch that? The name of the spaceship was a dragon. And so I felt like the dragon was going into the heavenly realm because it's the first time in 11 years that uh, uh, a spaceship has been launched. It was Elon Musk, Tesla guy that, that, that built that thing with NASA. And so uh, it's an amazing day and I had no idea. I said, well, I'm just going to leave it Saturday and we'll see what happens, you know, because. Yeah some reason there's something we do you know and and uh uh darlene says well what is the schedule for this uh we're gonna go to about an hour uh hour and a half maybe just however long it takes i'm not in a hurry uh we want to get some people healed <laughs> how about you <laughs> and so uh, it's an awesome day and uh and you know so i'm excited i'm kind of stirred up in my spirit maybe that's something <sighs> you're sensing in your spirit that's going on uh in the background uh, uh so we have to look at uh, the lord's revelation what he has for us there and what he wants to do within you but i'm glad you're here so uh this if you have done your homework uh uh was to watch a couple of the videos because we're gonna do a live court case tonight for activation and to engage with the, our courtrooms of heaven legal team remember we, we had like 21 beings entities that were our partners and you're going to do most of the work you're going to all be part of the team here and so last time we did this we did it on a spiritual site if you watch that one uh, i was sharing how you walk through a court case with holy spirit rather than mental knowing mentally how to do it so we got the protocols down, we got the guidelines down, and we're gonna engage tonight. All of us are gonna engage, we're all gonna be part of the team. And I want you to stretch your faith muscle, muscle and begin to hear and see and know what Yahweh is doing. And we'll talk more. I'm gonna be, I'm just gonna administrate this thing. And, but uh, you're gonna be doing the most of the deal, so. Uh, you guys did great last time. If you hadn't seen that video, go back and watch it because you need spiritual sight to do anything in the courts, anything in your life. You know, what, you have to know how to see. And it's more than just about spiritual vision. It's about sensing the, you know, if you look at some of Mike Tar Parsons teaching and the Ian Clayton teachings, there's 21 gateways to the spirit, soul and body. So that's opening up a, a uh, the gateways that allow you to sense things. I don't like so much the word seeing because we think, you know, we have to have a seer to lay hands on us so we can see. Well, that's biblical. That's true. But, but John 520, here's part of the activation tonight. John 520, 20, John 520 says, the father loves the son. All right. So first of all, the father loves the son implies there's a relationship based. That's what I was talking to Joe Lynn. There's a relation based uh, rather than a mental uh, formula based process to the courts. 
The father loves the son and he himself shows him everything he is doing. What does showing mean to you? That means you're going to see it. You're going to smell it. You're going to taste it, touch it. All these beings are going to manifest around you in their court case. And he's going to manifest it to you, right? And what's even greater in that, it says, <laughs> I'm going to even show you greater things than these so that you will marvel or be in awe, another translation said. What's greater than all things? <laughs> I have no idea, but I sure want to see him, don't you? But we got to start somewhere. And the start is relationship with, with the Lord through Jesus Christ. Okay. So that's pretty simple. And then he op that opens up the gateways to begin for him to show you all things. So activate in that by faith right now. Just step into that scripture. Just close your eyes just a Thank second. You. Father, we step into and engage your love. And your word in John 5, 20, that says, uh, the father loves the son. We're all sons. We thank you for that word. It's powerful word that you say that you will show us all things. And tonight, Father, we just activate our senses. We activate our spiritual senses. We activate uh, our faith and begin to receive uh, the things that you want to show us pertaining to healing, miracles, and even death, because your word, Father, says the wages of sin is death. Father, we just step into that by faith. We rest in that, and we uh, believe you're going to show us some things throughout this court case. Now, what's going to happen, uh, if you see or sense something, don't discredit anything. Anything can be significant. If your mind starts going, oh, it doesn't apply, because every time I've done an intensive, somebody after the meeting comes up and tells me, oh, I saw this in the spirit, and I didn't think it applied, and, and, and I just wanted to tell you now, I wish you would have shown that. I wish you had told me that. To... <laughs> I wish you had told me that before, because it applies. Nobody's going to make a mistake. This is practice, okay? But some of you are going to get healed. Right. Okay. So we're going to go in and, uh, and we're going to start here, here soon. Uh, and kind of, I'm going to lead and we're going to go with the flow here. Uh, we're going to want to go after a court case, uh, for healing and miracles and death, uh, because the wages of sin is death and, uh, some form of death you might be experiencing in your body. It's not fully, uh, you've died because you're here. And so, uh, you know, the other thing I was thinking uh, earlier, I said, you know, Jesus told us to, to heal the sick and cleanse the lepers, right? Well, that's an interesting thing, he says. Why is he, it seems to me like lepers and healing the sick, cleansing the lepers and healing the sick would be both within healing. Uh, what the Lord showed me, cleansing is always related to to iniquity and sins. It's cleansing of your generational bloodline, all right? So there's some generational things that we need to consider. Healing the sick can be from natural causes. We're just gonna take everything as being dark and demonic in this. This, Whether you agree or not, that's the way we're gonna approach it. <clears throat> uh, you can go back to whatever you think earlier because when in doubt, you know, repent it out. <laughs> so that's always works. It, it, Amen. We get, Amen. We get into this head. We get into this head game thing within our own mind, thinking, "Oh, that doesn't lie." It probably does. Just go ahead and repent. Now, what we're going to do is, uh, when we go through this case, uh, we're gonna we're gonna do it like a, a real court case. And uh, when you when you sent some, I hope some of you did your homework. I mean, did your homework? I, I said, take a few days to jot down the accusations, the things going on in your body, what you're sensing, because uh, we're going to use them tonight. If you didn't, you can just engage uh, uh, tonight. And so, what we're going to do, if just to kind of save time, uh, as we go through the court case, I'm going to guide you through that as another example that you can use, and. If you sense something, like uh, uh, we're going to start with, uh, you know, uh, the plaintiff usually goes f first. That's the, that's the accuser of the brethren. That's Satan. And all the demonic entities will be in the courts with him. If you sense something going on there, I want to hear from it. And you're going to lead us in repentance. 
Now, I don't want you to take some time to, you know, we got, let's see, 28, 30 people here. We're going to have, we don't have time for you to preach a message. We don't have time for you to explain it. I just want you to lead uh, the corporate group of us through uh, repentance, best you can. And I'll give some examples on the way how to do that, the way I do it. You don't have to do it my way. I'm just teaching as if we were in, uh, well, the way I always do it, and as if we're in a court. And then what will happen, we'll, 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 uh, the Holy Spirit will walk through this case with Holy Spirit, and all of a sudden he'll say, okay, I want you, that's all the accusations against this particular petition that he's brought up in his record book. Uh, so then Holy Spirit will say, I want you to move into presenting your evidence. Now in that place, it's when the angels, the cloud of witnesses, uh, heaven and earth, if you've been seeing my post about the courtroom of heaven legal team, your spirit is in there testifying that you're an heir, an heir of God and a child of Christ, a child of God. And so we need to be sensitive, not necessarily to the process, but to who is showing up what entity, what being, the blood speaks, uh, what is showing up to bear witness, to give testimony in the courts on our behalf. And when you get a hold of, of start engaging uh, creation and the cloud of witnesses and Jesus and you know your judge and the Holy Spirit and all the angelic realm and the cloud of witnesses, so forth and so on, your courtroom is gonna be more full and more complete and the judge will render a verdict based on all that uh, uh, engagement with those entities and beings that you're working with in your court case. So does that make sense? So you never ever should go alone. And uh, you know, if you ever think I need to find somebody else to help me, a human being to do that, that's good because we see in part and we prophesy in part. It's amazing what we can do with 30 people. But you have all creation wanting to partner with us tonight. We're gonna to invite them here in a minute to engage with us. So everybody good? Before we start, anybody have any questions? Just tell Jesus help me. Jesus help me. <laughs> he's a good helper. Yeah, he's a good helper. I yeah. think the gift of discernment will help. <laughs> this this thing is stacked in our favor, and, and yes. we should never be in fear coming into the courtroom of heaven. We should we, never we, into, we win. We should never go into the courtroom of heaven thinking I don't know enough, because Yahweh is omniscient, omnipresent, and what omnipotent. Yes. And so we have Him leading the court. He's the judge. We have Jesus, our advocate, our attorney. We have Holy Spirit, our legal counselor. And if you watch the video, the list just keeps going on and on and on. How many of you see angels? Occasionally. All right. I can't see hands, but but I'm just assuming maybe half of you do. <laughs> now, if you see an angel show up, I don't want you to just say, I see an angel. Before you say anything about seeing angels, or somebody from the cloud, or or something, a smell, a, a sound, a, a, a color, uh, uh, numbers, uh, somebody from the cloud of witnesses, they always appear because Hebrews 11.39 says, them without us are not made complete. So they have a vested interest uh, when we show up. So what I do, I have my phone right here. So I, if I hear a name of an angel, I'll boom, 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 boom. If I see a number, I'll look it up in strong concordance or some number number uh, definition book. We have to be careful with there because most of us want to go to a a like a dream interpretation book that gives gives a standard uh, interpretation like a dream. It's Yahweh who gives the interpretation of dreams and numbers and anything that comes in. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> And so we're going to go through that and be sensitive to what shows up. And uh, we'll engage more as, as we go throughout this process. This is what I do at every courtrooms of heaven, training intenses all over the world, online, everything I do. It all comes down to this. So you have a practical example of how to operate in the courtrooms of heaven that you're never, ever alone. And you're going to win, 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 no matter how much you know, as long as you're engaging intimate with him through the process and through the beings that show up, you've got a good case going. 
All right. So, so uh, you guys ready? Let's just pray, man. Let's just pray in tongues. We need, we need to stir something up for a moment. We need to step into the spirit. We'll get out of our, let's get out of our fleshly mental, mental thing going on here. <laughs> Oh, Rakata, <laughs> I Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's stop. Sounds like Pentecost or something going on. Yeah. Uh, Everybody just relax. It's going to be fine. We're going to have fun. People are going to get healed. And so uh, let's just dive in. And so uh, let's just dive in. Yeah. We're going to just step in by faith. Yeah. yeah. We're going to just step in by faith. Yeah. Uh-oh. I got an echo here for some reason. I saw, I saw, I saw, I saw, I saw us all stepping into the courtroom. I saw us all stepping into the courtroom. Okay, okay. I hang okay, on just a minute. Okay. I hang on just a minute. I'm gonna mute everybody. Let's see if that I'm helps. Up. Now is everybody good? Okay. Uh, we probably need to focus on being, you know, not so much background noise. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Good. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Ah, uh, wow, Father. Uh, we just step into the courtrooms by faith through the cross through the shed blood of Jesus Christ which is our legal access into the courts we thank you for the blood we honor the blood and father we step in and we ask you father Yahweh our righteous judge to to uh, uh, preside over this this court case we invite our advocate, our attorney, Lord Jesus Christ, into this courtroom. Uh, Jesus, you are our honored lawyer. We honor you and respect you, and we thank you for, for doing what you do in the courts and setting us free from every infirmity, every sickness, disease, every health issue, every infirmity issue. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come as our legal counselor, our helper, and help us walk 
through this court case, every phase of this court case, Father, we, our Holy Spirit, we just give it to you and trust you to lead us and guide us in everything that's pertaining to this court case so that we will not get sidetracked. We'll stay focused like a laser beam on healing and miracles, and we'll see the manifestation of healing uh, during this court case and afterwards as well. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, Father, we honor uh, the angelic realm. We invite them to come in as our witnesses, the cloud of witnesses to come and be uh, part of this, our witnesses. We ask the seven spirits of God to come. We ask uh, heaven and earth, all creation, to join us today to, on Pentecost in this courtroom proceeding for healing and miracles for every one of us here. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, mashallah. Father, we, we, we uh, honor the court procedures. We honor the, the guidelines. But we give you freedom to take us wherever you want us to take us. In Jesus' name. All right. Daniel 7.10 says, And the court was seated, and the books are opened. Now, what that means is plural. There's the, the books of destiny that was on our scrolls that is written before the foundation of the world of our purpose and our destiny, and it doesn't include sickness, right? It doesn't include any infirmity. It doesn't even include death. And so here we are. The books are opened, and the second set of books are the books of the records uh, that have been written against us. All the legal rights Satan has had to steal and kill and destroy due to our own personal sins and due to our transgressions and due to our generational bloodline iniquities all the way back to when that, that sin first entered into our record or our DNA. That can go all the way back to Adam. Don't let it stress you out because Holy Spirit is the only one that can reveal what that is. Okay, so Father, uh, we're gonna we're gonna command Satan to come in, and the demons that have legal rights standing against us uh, in the courtrooms of heaven. We don't we don't uh, yell and scream and bind and loose him uh, because we want him to reveal what's in the books. You know that's a big question because people had always told me uh, the Satan is the father of lies, right? I asked for like three four months. Yahweh, what's going on here? I'm troubled by this scripture. Yahweh, uh, the Satan is the father of all lies. What's going on? He said, about three months later, he said, Terry, what's, what's happening in the courts? He is not permitted to lie. The court is only about presenting evidence. So he is presenting evidence that he has in his record books. If God has a library of the scrolls of our destiny, guess who has a record book of the scroll of our sins and transgressions and generational bloodline iniquities, Satan himself. That's what he presents in the courts. He says, this is my legal right. It's recorded. Their own personal sins are recorded in my record book. The transgressions and the, the generational bloodline iniquities are recorded in my record books. Here is my evidence that I'm presenting. Render verdict on my behalf because I've got the records. I've got the proof. I've got the evidence. And if you ever study about, about a, how does an attorney win, win a case? They've got to have evidence, right? Isn't that right, Paul? <laughs> they've got to have witnesses and they've got to have a precedent. You know, so what we have as our precedent is the word and our promises, our prophetic promises. We'll go over more of that. Logos, rhema words. We'll go more into that as we get into that phase of the case. But Satan is presenting evidence against us that he has legal rights to steal, kill, and destroy until we deal with them. So let's start. And this is the part where we activate our senses. We activate what we're, what we're hearing, what we're seeing. Uh, maybe a taste, maybe a smell, maybe a quick vision, a flash or something. Uh, I want you to all uh, step in and begin to engage. 
This is specifically related to, oh, let me do this. What we generally want to do is present why we're here to the, to the judge, right? So, Father, as our righteous judge, we come to you and present uh, uh, this case, our petition for healing and miracles uh, uh, in our bodies, in our, in our uh, uh, spirit, our soul, and our bodies that will take us to the place of freedom uh, to walk in divine health. So that's as simple as it is. I mean, it's just flowing in the spirit. And, uh, Terry? Yes. Um, can you mute us all again? Yes. Somebody has a cold and uh, they're sniffling a lot. It's hard to hear you. Okay. There we go. Uh, only activate your microphone if you have uh, would like to share something. I hope all of you step in. You all see, you're all sons, and you're all in relationship with the Father, so you should begin to see something in the spirit realm. So don't discredit it. I want you to just be bold. Faith up, what I said on the, on the, on the uh, post. Faith up, and let's do this thing. So uh, let's see. Who'd like to start? I can start. Um, okay. I heard the number 1829, and okay. I looked it up in the Strong's. And it's the word for pasture. Okay. Okay. So uh, I would take that and say, uh, Lord, what are you showing me? What do you want to do with this pasture word? That's good. I love to, uh, we generally do those words, 1829, in both the strong uh, uh, Greek and the Hebrew to get a more full definition. And the Lord will say, okay, it's this one, either the Greek or the Hebrew, sometimes both. I heard, I heard your grandpa, your grandma, your mom and your dad, and a lady I prophesied a word to about 20 years ago is here. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's deal with the pastor issue first. Uh, who was that, Craig? Why don't you lead us? Anything you sense maybe some pastoral leadership has done uh, that maybe they may have said uh, uh, healing's not for today. Or, you know, that was a, you know, that was a dispensation of time. Anything that might, you might think of in the spirit. Why don't you lead us corporately through a group repentance of our own sins? I'm guilty. You know what I say? I don't go, I don't go uh, what I, uh, I didn't do that. I didn't, or, uh, you know, we have to say, here's my, my defense. I'm guilty. I repent. And so, Craig, why don't you lead us in that? And, uh, okay. Okay, it's actually the word pasture like a field. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about five-fold ministry. Pasture in a field. Okay. Oh, no, no. Mm -hmm. okay. So, Father, we, we stand here and come into agreement with you every time that you have sought to lead us into new pastures, new places of growth and development, new places of getting what we needed, and we refuse because it for whatever reason, we refuse. We repent of that, and we too, and even the decision-making process that we that we use to arrive at the decision to say no to you, we repent of that process. And we ask even now that we would shift from there, move from there, and do those things that you have put in our hearts to do, so that we can experience the pasture that you set before us. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you. What we want to do as we do that corporately is, is we want to repent on behalf of our generational bloodlines because somewhere back there it's true too, and somewhere it's stored in our DNA where God wants to remove the spots and wrinkles in our DNA so that we can become a pure, spotless bride for for Jesus. It's okay. We don't have to do it right now, but just for training. Uh, let's see, Paul asked if there's a Charlie here. I don't think so. Uh, maybe look up what Charlie's name means. I have a brother-in-law, Charlie. Brother-in-law? Hang on, Paul, you're, let me unmute you. Well, there we go. 
What are you sensing with Charlie? I only heard uh, a call to a Charlie, so it may, may not have been real. We'll keep, we'll keep going. Okay, okay. If somebody comes up with something for Charlie or Charles or something like that, we'll, we'll hit it. That's okay. I mean, that's going to happen. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna hear stuff. We're going to think stuff, and, and uh, you're not wrong. Uh, maybe as we get more experience, we're going to know exactly what Charles Charlie means in our particular case, but this is practice. So thank you, Paul. That was good. All right. Yes. For um, pasture, I did get the word resistance. Okay. Why don't you lead us from uh, uh, corporately in prayer or in repentance for our own personal resistance. Re resistance and uh, our generational sins as well. Okay. Um, forgive us, uh, Lord, for resistance to um, um, the pastors where you, you, you want to lead us with our generations, with our ancestors, Lord, where we've been resistant to your leading. Um, we, we say we are guilty and we yeah. repent. Lord, we forgive us all the way back to when these records began resisting who you are, resisting um, where you're leading us into green pastures. Lord, I, that, that came to me. And we, we, um, we just um, thank you, Lord, that the, the blood of Yeshua is our defense going all the way back to where the records began, Lord. Mm, that's good. Thank you. Mother wounds. Jolene, you want to lead us in uh, repentance? Um, so, Father, we just um, we say we're sorry when we've grumbled and complained instead of being grateful. And so we just say we're sorry for not being appreciative of what you were doing at the time. Yes. Amen. So one thing we learned through this, we're going to kind of train some as we go, is, is uh, when, we, when a person leads us in group repentance, uh, heaven wants our voice print as in agreement with that. So you can say whatever you want to, amen, I repent. You know, I'm guilty uh, under your breath or out loud. Uh, we got you muted, but uh, uh, however you do that. And then as we go, uh, well, let's just do it right now. Uh, what I'm going to ask you right now, what do you see in the spirit? What, what uh, according, like the progression of the court case, what are you seeing right now? Generally, right off the bat it's pretty dark right anybody see darkness you might see some chains on us limitations bondages you might see uh you know just demons kind of hovering over us kind of controlling us and you know, anything but it's generally always 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 darkness we're in chains and bondages and limitations restrictions and I want you to watch as we go through this because one by one we deal with them. We've dealt with their legal rights. You're going to start feeling lighter. You're going to start seeing more light come in. And I want you to feel free to share that because I'll stop you every once in a while and we'll go, what are you seeing in the spirit? Because we have to follow in the spirit more than what we follow up here in our head. So uh, what is any, what do you see right now going on in the spirit? Hey, Terry. Um... Yeah. When I first entered the courts, um, I, I seen the whole courtroom setting, and I sit down and I be, I began to see the color purple. Okay. Purple. All yeah. Right. I believe that has a lot to do with royalty and uh, about who we are and identity and our authority, where we need to stay in that. We're not in fear of of any demonic beings showing up, they're under our feet. Does that ring true to you? Yes. Okay, okay. Whatever else royalty means to you, sonship, uh, kingly, priestly anointings, 
that can apply. That's very key as we go through this because the demons, Satan himself, is uh, under our feet and we're ruling and reigning in this process. So let's see. Uh, bloodshed, innocent bloodshed. Yeah. Field covered in blood. Cain killed Abel, right? Yeah. So, uh, Father, you know, it's, it can go a lot into bloodshed there, which is, is very heavy and deep. Uh, we can cover a few things there, but here's, let me just share how I do it. You don't have to do it like me, but uh, Father, we're guilty. I'm guilty of innocent bloodshed. In my own personal life, when I, I was a partner with uh, 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 abortions, I shed innocent blood. I was guilty. I am guilty. Uh, and Father, when I, when I uh, was in agreement with, with innocent bloodshed, or when I wanted to find ven vengeance, or I was after uh, uh, vengeance in a way that, that was, wasn't godly. I, I wanted revenge, uh, and I shed blood, whether in my, I actually shed blood with my physical hands, or it was in my heart. I repent of having bloodshed within my heart. Father, I thank you and ask you to forgive me of my sins, my generational bloodline iniquities, all the way back where the record first came into my, my DNA. That's a good one. Thank you. Dishonoring the mothers. Okay, Darwin, you want to lead us in that one? Um, this had to do with mother wound, wounds. Okay. Um, so, Lord, we are guilty of dishonoring our mothers with our words, our thoughts, our actions. Um, all the way back to Adam, Lord. Forgive us when we have um, spoken against our mothers um, and dishonored them, Lord. And Lord, we just um, pray that your, the blood of Yeshua would be our defense back to where the records began for each one of us that are guilty of this. Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Uh, good stuff, guys. You're doing good. Deception all around us. Yeah. Henry, why don't you lead us there and however you flow with related to uh, healing and miracles. Heavenly Father, lead us. Lead us to the truth. Uh, let, let the deception fall down. Um, <clears throat> you know the truth. The truth will set us free. Let us rest in your presence. That's the only place where truth lies. We repent of deceiving others. We repent of deceiving ourselves. We, Father, we repent of not walking in the truth of your word. And Father, we repent on behalf of our own personal sins, our transgressions, and our generational bloodlines, all the way back to the record that first entered. Yeah, it seems like this is a lot to do with uh, not honoring our mothers and fathers or parents hurting Darwin hurting, hating and cursing fathers, wishing death upon the fathers. Yeah. Yeah. Apathy. Scott Miller had one first. I'm sorry, apathy. You want to lead us there, Scott? Lord God, we just come before you. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, your exceeding great and precious promises. And we repent, Lord God, we are guilty of being apathetic uh, towards your kingdom. Now, you are faithful, Lord God, and we have all reason why we should fervently seek you. But we've been apathetic and not seeking you with all our heart. And we just repent in Jesus' name. Awesome, Scott. Everybody in agreement? Say amen. Amen. What I see in the spirit, you can, you can take a, a moment here, too, along with me. 
is I see we were initially in very deep, dark waters and that were over our head. All of a sudden now the water is almost at like eye level where we're beginning to see, we're beginning to engage more. We're beginning to see, okay, there's some breakthrough actually happening as we deal with each one of those particular issues. We're dealing with legal rights every time we repent of those areas, whether it's in your life, my life, all of our lives, we're, we're dealing with them there corporately. So we're beginning to come to a place where we're going to begin to see more clearly, hear more clearly, and engage with the, the spirit realm uh, and all creation at a, at a greater level. Does that make sense? You guys seeing anything else? I guess when we first walked in, I just saw like the father, the judge was really happy to see us. And it was just that smile and then it got serious. And it wasn't as serious as, it's not an angry serious, but it's a seriousness that's saying, let's do this once and for all. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so it's a class action suit <laughs> for all of us. That's good class action father we just embrace this court case as a class action suit for all of us here our families our relatives father all those we come in contact with with we'll just we'll just be the expression of divine healing and health so they'll come to us for healing we'll just we'll just carry the atmosphere of divine healing in our bodies and our in our, uh, our soul, in our spirit, everywhere we go, Father, and we'll release it everywhere, Father, we go, in mm. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So it's already getting lighter, right? That's good. We still have some ways to go. Um, yeah, I've seen three white bearded men in white robes standing in front of the judges, uh, like where the judge said that. Okay, did you sense negative or they were on? No, I, I sensed positive because they were okay. smiling. Okay, okay. There's a men in white linen. Uh, they're powerful uh, witnesses in the courts of heaven. Like uh, uh, some of you may step in, know about men in white linen more than I do, but they're a cloud of witness people. Uh, so they're here to help us. They'll come in at a later time. So first we want to stay focused on dealing with the plant plaintiff's accusations against us. You're doing good. Uh, we just need to put that in the right place. Okay. We will, what Satan will try to do, will try to take us off, off course because he doesn't want us to get free. He'll want to confuse us, get us off the agenda, get, get us off, off, off the petition and take us on a bunch of rabbit trails. Not that that's a rabbit trail, but it just goes in a, in a different place. Scott, did you have something? No. Yes. Uh, just sexual lust and promiscuity. Okay. Lead us in corporate prayer there, repentance. I'm sorry. Thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. We, we have been engaged in sexual lust, promiscuity, and uh, sexual distortion. In Jesus' name, we just repent and confess that in uh, our generations, oh God, we and our past generations have committed sin and just uh, we repent and turn our hearts to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, amen. Amen, amen. Let's see. We've got uh, hating and cursing fathers, more about the mothers and the fathers, wishing death upon the fathers. Yeah, it's huge. If you didn't do it, your generations probably did, right? So anything our head will go, well, I didn't do that. Well, I can guarantee you it probably happened in your in your generational bloodline. So uh, let's see, Christine. Oh, wait a minute. Darling, you want to read it? Lead us there? Or did we do that one already? Uh, no, we haven't. Um, <clears throat> um, Lord, we are guilty of dishonoring and hating and cursing and wishing death upon our fathers. And in doing that, we have dishonored you. Forgive us. 
just let the blood of Yeshua wash through our bloodlines back to the, every record of those present here, Lord. And just wash and cleanse and free us up. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Amen. You know, something important happens, too, when we walk through these cases with Holy Spirit. When you sense something really hits home or, or that was a big issue, you know, it's almost like your spirit will, will resonate with that. It's almost like your spirit will leap inside you like that was a big deal. I sensed that when Darlene yeah. prayed that over us. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Christine yeah. has harming our pets and harming our children. Yeah. Thank you, Darlene. Uh, Christine, you want to lead us? There we go. Thank you. Um, so I just pray, Father. Um, Father. We just, I just repent in Jesus' name. We're not knowing what to do, reacting in anger and dishonoring your creation. And discarding those things that are in our arena of responsibility and inflicting harm. And as a consequence, opening doors and gates that bring harm into our household. So, Father, we repent of acts of neglect or violence or disregard and anger in Jesus' name. Ungodly trading floors is what I saw. Uh, that that can cover a whole lot of different area financially, uh, our belief systems, our heart attitudes, our actions. Uh, so far, we're just going to cover them all. We don't have time to go through all of them. Uh, there's some great books out there for ungodly trading floors. Mike Parsons, Karina Pataki, uh, several others have great books about it we can learn from. Uh, Father, I repent of trading on an ungodly uh, trading floors. And I traded for darkness instead of trading on godly trading floors for your divine purpose, your divine will, and for your divine health and uh, healing and miracles in my body, Father. We repent on behalf of our generational bloodlines all the way back to where that entered into our record. And Father, we thank that you are... Uh, are able to forgive us once we repent. Okay, let's stop for a second. What do you guys sense in the spirit now? Are we making any progress or still kind of about the same? We should be. Well, I'm going to ask you. <laughs> I, I sensed. Um... <clears throat> I sense Yahweh was pleased, uh, particularly when we were doing the, uh, the father, um, you know, the cursing and wishing death upon fathers. Mm -hmm. uh, I just sensed uh, a pleasure from him. Yeah, awesome. Good. That's awesome. It's amazing. I looked up, I've had allergies. I'm being healed of them uh, almost every day. Uh, but a lot of the things I began to look up that I have experienced in my own body were uh, the re the root was uh, relationships. 
And so we're covering, without you guys even knowing, we're covering a lot of things to do with relationship with family. And so mm -hmm. that's, that's to yeah. me, is powerful. Powerful. So God's pleased, and we're doing good. And we're doing Sorry, good. I, I'm just sensing uh, remorse and um, true sorrow, but not guilt or grief. It's a just true sorrow and remorse, just really sorry, but it's without the guilt or not, not there's no guilt attached. Okay. So are you saying uh, if there's no guilt we're uh, attached, what, what they're, 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 uh, we may not feel like repenting for any guilt we felt? Is that what you're sensing? Um, I guess that well, I don't feel a weight of guilt, <laughs> okay. but there, there's that godly sorrow. I think if you can say that, that true turning of the heart. Okay. Okay. Being remorseful. Huh? Why don't you lead us through repentance there with that? Do you want me to pray through that? Yeah, repent. Corporate so Father, repent. we thank you for godly um, repentance that was provided at the cross and maybe get a chance to apply it right here, what was done and appropriate, what was done at the cross. That's a true sorrow in our heart, God, as far back. We stand there right now for, mm, mm, with the freedom of knowing that we're a forgiven people. Mm. Something like that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that was good. That's perfect. You can't make a mistake here. Oh, okay. This is training. This is training. And we're getting we're getting free. Uh, did anybody have any pain in their body coming into this meeting? I want you to check your body. I want you to see if that pain is still there. I did have some pain, but it's uh, decreasing at this moment. Okay, good. Um, I wanted to say that um, I see a big slate, which had a lot of words written on it. I'm not sure what the words were, but I see the blood slowly going down over the board. And as the blood is slowly going down the board, Whatever what was written on the board is being erased by the blood. Wow, yeah, that's good. <laughs> Thank you. You know, he knows our heart more more than anything, and he honors our, our, our heart and our faith when we're learning more than he does our head knowledge. So even though if it feels like we're stumbling through, we are, <laughs> you know, but he honors that. And look what he just, he's doing. He's, he's healing our bodies and erasing all those those words off of our life. Uh, there we go. Unhealthy eating habits, stubbornness and refusing to listen to him and not respecting our bodies, not honoring our bodies uh, to life. Amen, darling. Why don't you? That's, that was so good right there. I had thought about that one earlier, but you, you got it. And if you will, darling, just lead us in repentance in that particular issue. Oh, thank you, righteous judge, righteous father. Forgive us. We are guilty of eating unhealthy, even when you have prompted us to stop. We are guilty of disobedience and not honoring and respecting these bodies not honoring and respecting this temple, Lord. Forgive us to where it began, to uh, fear of, of not having enough uh, food to eat, Lord, not, <clears throat> not trusting you to make the provision for food. Forgive us for insecurity when it comes to food, Lord God. Forgive us for unhealthy eating habits, back to the records for each one of us, Lord. Forgive us and let the blood of Yeshua just be our defense and wash 
and cleanse. Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you. I want you to look and see something. Uh, generally on uh, Satan's bench, all the demons that come in with him, as we deal with that particular issue or sin or generation of bloodline iniquity that that demon represents, they have no legal standing in the court, so they'll leave. And so one thing you can watch in the spirit, following the Holy Spirit, is who's left in the court? Who's left on his bench? Usually Satan himself, in my experience, is the last one standing in the court against us. And so I just see one by one as we're dealing with this, they're, they're leaving the courts and we're getting closer to our, our dealing with accusations that uh, you know, for this particular petition. Yeah. I, when we first went into the courts, you know, I saw all of us together walking in, but it's like we all had chains as you said, and I see, and I can smell Satan. He doesn't smell that great. And exactly what you're describing, Terry. Yeah, he's getting, he's, he's angry as we're going through this. And <clears throat> um, the books of the ministry, the, accus the books of accusations that he's got, all those files he's got, as we go through this, it's disappearing. That's what I, I see. And I see Jesus. And he's, he's smiling. And, um, you know, the, the judges gavel the hammer. They, when we when the prayers are done, it's like you know the the hammer goes down, mm -hmm. and there's a the file is like stamped, it <laughs> pushed aside, like you know, yeah, it's finished. That's good. Awesome, awesome. That's a good vision. Okay, Scott. Uh, said you need help on how to phrase something. What's uh, what are you seeing? What are you, what are you hearing? That's what I'm saying. I'm. That's what I'm trying to deal with. Okay. It's that I seldom do here. Okay. Okay. I'm not seeing anything right now. Okay, that's fine. Hey, Gary? Excuse uh, me? Gary? Yeah, Scott. Uh, what I want to do is, you know, what I began to speak of earlier, uh, uh, I like the word sensing better than seeing because we all want to think we <coughs> visibly see something. And that's not always the way we perceive things or sense things from the Lord. It might be a little thought, might be a, anything can show up in the courtrooms of heaven. We've had, you know, I like to do court cases outside where we can pay attention to creation speaking to us. Uh, everything can apply more than just what we see. So don't limit yourself to being able to see uh, visions or prophetic images because it's way more than that. And uh, we get locked into that since we've been in the prophetic movement. We get locked into that uh, pretty heavily sometimes. And, and just take that scripture, John 5, 20, and begin to, well, let's just, let's just do this uh, as, a, as a, that's an accusation against you because you actually can see. You actually can sense those things. And you actually can hear the root cause of every sickness and disease and infirmity against you. So, Father, we repent of doubt we repent of unbelief we repent by speaking the words i don't see i can't see i seldom hear god's voice uh, that's a binding contract that has bound you to not hearing not seeing not hearing his voice 
So, Father, we, we repent of being in agreement with the accuser of the brethren, even out of our mindsets, our attitudes, motives in our hearts, and the words that we spoke out of our mouth. Uh, we repent of our sins, our transgressions, and when that happened throughout our entire generational bloodline all the way back to Adam. So there we go. So thank you for your comment. That opened up a whole thing we needed to address. Uh, let's see. Paul, you got something there? Two or three junior demons stood and left. Good. Yeah. Shuffling out as Darlene was speaking. That's good stuff right there. Ogre-like creatures walking away with unhealthy food issue. Yeah, that's so powerful. It's almost like a sowing and reaping uh, issue. We we sow we 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 sow uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, unhealthy foods, uh, processed foods in our diet. We reap death, a level of death, a measure of death in that. So I ask the Lord to help you with that. Air came right out of them like balloons. <laughs> That's good stuff. <laughs> Ooh, don't you love it? They have no legal standing other than present evidence, Father. We just do. We thank you, Father. We're defeating the enemies. We're crushing them under our feet right now in Jesus' name. Loneliness, yeah. Uh, Joe, why don't you lead us in repentance with loneliness? Lonely, lo yeah, loneliness. My son came on. Sorry, my sophomore came on. I apologize for that. Father, we come before you. We ask you to forgive us for the loneliness. We thank you for the times that we have said, I hate being alone. I don't like me alone or I'll never be married again. Forgive us for that, for disrespecting and not honoring the times that, that maybe you have called us to be alone for a season at a time. We repent for that. We ask you to forgive us. We ask the blood of Jesus to cover that. Yeshua, we repent for it in Jesus' name. Terry, I like the way you use the word since, because there's a lot of times I do see, but there's most of the time I sense. And when you was talking about sometimes uh, the Satan is the last to be in the, the courtroom, I sense that he stood up angrily and pounded his fist on the table very hard. And you're muted. I didn't hear what you said. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, who pounded his fist on the table? Satan did. All right. He's a loser. Mm. That's good stuff. Mm -hmm. He knows he's going down. <laughs> Over-reliance on doctors. That's huge. That is huge. You want to lead us, Lisa, in repentance on that one? Father, we just come before you, knowing that you have given everything to us. But Father, we just come before you, knowing that too many times we have just listened to the report of the doctor rather than the report of the Lord. For that, Man, you spoke. we just plead the blood of Jesus. Please forgive us. Forgive us for even idolatry when it comes to what the doctors say and what they said and not relying on your word and what you've given us and doing all the things that you have told us to do. So we just come right now on behalf of ourselves and our generations and we ask that you would forgive us and that we could appropriate the blood of Jesus over this sin. Jesus name. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, addictions. Okay. Yeah. 
All right, Patricia, you want to lead us in addictions? We're going to stop here soon, and just for the sake of time, we're going to move on to the next part of the case after Patricia. Mm -hmm. There she is. Lord, we just come before you and ask your forgiveness, Lord. We swear I'm guilty, we're guilty, Lord God, of anything that we put before you, before you, Lord. I just ask your forgiveness. Jesus, may your blood will cover up wherever this came through. Um, back to Adam, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so we could go on and on and on, uh, but I think that's enough for tonight. Uh, we've got uh, demons leaving. We've got Satan pounding his fist. He's through. He's over. He's defeated. He knows it. And so that was all wonderful and amazing. Uh, and we're getting some results. That's what I'm after. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to get results. So if we think mentally, we have to be get our ducks in a row and all that stuff. Don't think like that. That's uh, that's uh, just follow the Holy Spirit. And this is an example how to do that. So we're going to move over into presenting our evidence in the case. So uh, what we want to do is we've already had uh, what three men in white linen. Whoever said that, I want you to look into that and see what their names are. Who are they? Just like we do with angels. If angels show up, we generally their name implies or is what they do. Uh, so if you see angels, dive in a little deeper before you speak. Get the name of the angel. Get the names of the cloud of witnesses. Get the names of the cloud of witnesses that may show up. Uh, some of your, uh, we can use some logos word. We can use the rhema word, which may apply for this particular issue. But we've got tons of logos words that we can put as evidence. What I'll do for like a word, I'll say, uh, Father, I present as evidence the word that says, by his stripes we were healed. I present as evidence that you, you carried our sickness on the cross. You bore our sickness. You bore our infirmity on the cross. Things like that. I'll just present, you know, the whole, you talk to Paul, if you talk to any attorney, it's about presenting evidence. So I'll just use some kind of wording like that. I present evidence. Uh, the angels will, uh, will want to present evidence. So we need to sense what they are. Dreams and visions may be evidence. Whatever you're sensing is presenting evidence on our behalf so that we'll, uh, the judge can render a favorable verdict. He's going to do that. We're already way ahead of the we crush the darkness under our feet. So all we need to do is just like in a natural court case is present our evidence. Then we'll get a verdict. That sound good? Uh, let's, let's see. Anybody get something? We have, we have uh, three men in white linen. Anything on that? It's all right if you don't get it, but, but this is just practice. And uh, the more you act, you know, you, you exercise your spiritual senses by reason of use. So the more you engage with the cloud, more you engage with the angels, more that you engage with, with different things that, that uh, are, are wanting to present evidence, we can have a more complete and full case. Why are you showing three and one? Three and one, okay. What does that mean to you? I don't know, but then after I heard that, I heard, I, I heard Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Okay, what does that mean to you? Take a minute, take a minute, dive back in. What is, what is the Lord trying to show you? That's what I'm asking about angels. Don't, don't just give me, I see an angel. Stop for a moment and ask the Lord, why am I seeing what I'm seeing? What's the purpose for them being here with us? Matthew, Mark, and Luke would be in the cloud of witnesses, right? So that would be, uh, maybe the, the men in white linen. Just find out a little bit more from the Lord and then come back and let us know. That's good though. Very good. 
Let's see. Anybody else? How about somebody that hasn't commented yet? Anybody else see anything? There's Craig and Layla down there. Elsa. Uh, Ryan. Hey, Ryan. Becky and Celine. Rebecca over there. What are you sensing? This is all good stuff. You can't go wrong. You can't make a mistake because we, we're just training. I have a question. Can you request uh, someone from the cloud of witness? Well, I've never done that. I would. Say, <laughs> I wouldn't say no, because <laughs> I just haven't flown that way in the course. But uh, go for it. See what happens. Okay, I was just going to request my spiritual father, who has gone ahead, someone who really poured into me a lot, and. Um, so I'm requesting for Wade Taylor. Oh, well, he's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. What would you think Wade Taylor, since he's your spiritual father, would present as evidence in this particular case? Mm. Just assuming by faith he's here. Does, mm. What would he present? What would he say? What would he say as evidence? Yeah. Why I should be forgiven? That's the question. No? No, we're, we moved from repentance. Now we're just presenting evidence on our behalf. So. Oh, just presenting evidence. It's that. Yeah. Um, just at the time we spent together and how much he poured into me. Um, so it's a part of what's a part of his inheritance. Okay. What was his whole ministry about? Presenting the bride, presenting an end time people, presenting just preparing the bride. There you go. So <laughs> <laughs> you got the picture? Yeah. So he's presenting us as bride. He's given he's evidence. Presenting he's bride. presenting evidence that we're the bride. Okay. More than likely. It's generally about their ministry while on earth. Yeah. They can do much more because they're... Most, a, but, okay. But that's good. That's a good way to look at it. Awesome. That's really, really cool. I think for me, when I, what, I, what came to my spirit was the three in one was my mom, my dad, and my grandma. Um, and that, the, the, the three clouds of witnesses to me, I really felt my spirit re represented the, the word of God they instilled in me. Okay, yeah. So we present the whole entire word from our forefathers <laughs> about healing and miracles. We just present it as evidence that the cloud of witnesses that the men in white linen that the Wade Taylor is presenting as evidence in this court for us to be free from from uh, infirmities and that we will walk in our healing and miracles would definitely, definitely manifest in Jesus' name. Oh, this is good. <laughs> um, I I noticed um, an angel, and the angel's name was uh, Elias, and that's a name I hadn't heard before. So I looked it up um, online, and I think it's a variation of Elijah, um, Jehovah our God, and then in the same article on the page further down it said famous people with the name Elias and um, Walt Disney his middle name was Elias so Walt Elias Disney it, it um, made me think of childlike faith and um, being children of God uh, and yeah. presenting that evidence of you know of being born again as a child of God and receiving our inheritance yeah so good that's good John thank you that's how you do it. You just take a moment. You know, I have my phone with me so I, or my computer with me. I can Google it right there and I can find out a little more information. That will tremendous, tremendous help. That was awesome. Really appreciate you diving in there. Terry? Yes. Um, as far as um, honoring our, our father and mother, um, what I was getting is because because we have honored our fathers and our mothers, 
um, it is, it, it will be well with our bodies. It will be well with us on earth. Um, so that is a promise and that extends to our, our physical well-being, right? Yes, yes. That's good. Absolutely key. That was the, the flip side of all the dishonor we showed our mothers and fathers in our generation. So that was good to bring that up. Um, can I say something? <laughs> yes. yes. Um, when, you know, I've, I've done this sort of thing um, a little bit with people and one of the things that I'm even seeing it now is that um, whenever there's a court hearing in heaven, then all of the bloodline um, uh, people who are connected through the bloodlines all begin to crowd in the outer courts and they are there because there is a redeemer standing within the courts who is prepared to deal with illegal trades and illegal um um, you know, the accusations because they're, and, and they are from across all times and it's like they, they are waiting for some kind of freedom, deliverance um, that, that transgresses, you know, all time zones. So not, we're not talk, we're talking eternal time zone, but I've often seen, you know, that this crowding in the outer courts um, where that, yeah, people throughout, uh, bloodlines and ancestries are uh, still seeking for some kind of freedom that comes from the one who is standing within the court process. Have you ever had that or, or do you feel that's right? Not specifically that way, but that's a good explanation. Right? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> that's really good. And because it feels to me too that when the freedom, when uh, the court hearing's over and, and the verdict is not guilty, that that runs throughout all time and within the eternal zone and into the future. So people who are connected to those bloodlines that are living now also will receive some kind of healing or freedom uh, from the court cases that we're doing and we're never, as you've said, never doing them in isolation where, um, yeah, there's, a, there's a, a huge, huge ramifications and, you know, even a, a vibrations and frequencies that run throughout all time right. that will also release the up and coming generation. Right. Do you see that happening now? To me, it's related to Hebrews 11, 39 and 40. Them, speaking of the cloud of witnesses, them without us will not be made complete. So that's why they're there for perfection. And, uh, yeah, man. and yeah. so do you, what do you see happening there? Are they, are they still just waiting or are they doing any, any other? Yeah, yeah. No, because it's kind of like layers in in what I'm seeing. So there's what is happening directly in the court with, with the cloud of witnesses who are holy test, have a holy testimony, but it's, it's like these, they, there's an outer court gathering as well, waiting for the verdict and, and just waiting. So it's like their freedom will come through what is happening now. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. Awesome. That's, that's, uh, that's really cool. Okay. Uh, Terry? Yes, Scott. Yes. So, um, I posted a link in the comments. I tried to make an image in the comments, but it posted as a link. Um, basically my calling, my purpose, uh, there's a vision God gave me in 2014 of this painting I need to make and a book I need to write. And, uh, basically, um, I'm to use this painting as a uh, springboard for my teaching. I've had several invitations to churches and taught all based on the painting. Um, but this is my purpose, basically, from, from as deep as I know, my purpose is to teach off of this painting. Um, okay. Can you see it? Uh, no, it just shows. I'd have to do a screen share. Uh, 
does it is it related to healing and miracles it's related to identity okay well that's the teaching most of the teaching comes out of the painting is related to id your identity in christ okay so i would take that if you're sensing it i want you to present some kind of evidence as our identity in christ as sons however you would present that is free to you uh to share your your views of that but that's what we're looking for is we're presenting evidence and um, obviously identity is huge is huge to, to that so just share or, or or consider just presenting evidence for the for the corporate gathering here and like rebecca said for for the ones that are waiting outside of the uh of the courts for their freedom as well so thank you lord god in jesus name for our identity in christ that we uh, are, are crucified with Christ and raised up in resurrection life and seated with God at the right hand of, seated with Christ at the right hand of God the Father in Jesus' name. Thank you that our identity is in you and that uh, you are our shepherd, the bishop and pastor of our souls in Jesus' name. We abide in you, Lord. Help us to seek you in continually and dwell in Christ Jesus and do all that you call us to do in Jesus' name as sons of the Most High God. Yeah. And concerning the painting, Lord God, I just ask that you would open up doors for me to minister off of this painting, open up doors for finances to come in, for the, me to make a diorama and write the book in Jesus' name. I thank you for it in the name of Jesus, amen. Yes, yes, amen. Uh, Paul asked, are we seeking our own healing? Yes. Or are we here for one another? Yes. And we're here for the ones waiting in the in the outer court as well. So it's a it's a class actions class action uh, lawsuit more than just a Brother Terry, are we still referring also to the three men in white that someone said that they saw uh, up there? Well what do you what do you feel you need to uh, present on that. Well, uh, speaking of the number of, of, of the three men in white linen, uh, where well, the Lord has been dealing with me with the number twos lately, and uh, I'm not actually going to speak about the threes that you spoke about earlier, but it's something that was absolutely phenomenal about what happened today, even with the threes, but we'll talk about that another time. But in Acts 2 and then uh, 22, when Peter stood up, he was talking about Yeshua. Uh, and then uh, from my understanding that the, the only scripture in the Bible where you see all of the words, uh, signs, miracles, and wonders, uh, the 222, which is the number we know is agreement or witness or alignment. So what I would present it was that we would uh, that we're we come into agreement, obviously, on what God has said about us uh, as on our destiny scrolls, um, and the prophets, the prophecies that has been spoken over our lives, uh, that we can wage a good warfare, and to come into agreement with heaven, that uh, we here in the earth are in agreement with what God has said on behalf of uh, even the witnesses in the courts, uh, in the courtyard. Families and friends, those that have uh, gone before us, so on and so forth. That the the numbers of the two two two, in um, uh, overly emphasized, I would say, that we would uh, come into the signs, miracles, and wonders to be made manifest in each and every one of our lives. Yes, yes, amen. Very good. Thank you. How are we looking in the spirit in the court right now? Let's, let's take a little check and see. What does it look like in there? Getting pretty light, getting free, no more chains. Um, I see, I don't have the name of the angel, but I see an angel um, standing there with a scroll, like it's unfolding. It's, it's, he's holding it in his hand and it's like a, a longer type of scroll. 
Okay, good, good. Uh, take a moment. If you get the name of that angel, that'd be wonderful. If you don't, uh, you'll you'll be equipped to, to get it next time. You see how uh, when we enter the courts that uh, uh, there's power with, I see in part, I and I prophesy in part. I never have the whole picture. And we need each other many times as we can in the courtrooms of heaven. But then we don't have friends. I go to courts probably a uh, hundred times to the, for the times I don't have uh, anybody go with me. And then I just engage my legal team. But there was no way I could have been sensing all of what, what uh, you came up with, each and every one of you came up with. So there's, there's uh, you know, really when you're starting out, I recommend, you know, get with a friend or two that can sense things in the spirit. And you'll do a lot better. And then as we grow, we begin to engage uh, uh, all those entities as our legal team. We'll become more proficient at it, and it'll become easier. Like riding a bicycle, it'll become second nature. So with that said, uh, unless have anybody else has anything just burning on their heart, we'll move into uh, a verdict uh, from the Lord. Uh, Terry, so I just... Uh can I step in? I haven't said anything and I was just kind of waiting to get some clarification. But, but when I, um, when we first went in, I saw the scales of justice and I waited because I don't know what, what, what he, what he's saying about that Lord. And, and it kind of went into more of a the blind, you know, it, you know, it, it does. Anyway, I won't get into what the scales of the woman of lady justice means, but, what the Lord was showing me was those, those um, witnesses were balancing the scales and I saw the scales balanced. We couldn't do it without their help. Um, I also saw that he took the, the, you know, the sword in her hand is of course the sword of the spirit. And he also, they took off the um, blindfold. We were blind and now we can see, and they, they are helping us to see through it, through this whole thing. And they're also giving us that power in the sword. And um, it was very powerful because that's who balanced the whole scenario was, was them. Yeah, wow, good stuff. So there, he's healing our vision to see and sense in the spirit as well, not just our physical bodies, right? Correct. Yeah, that's good. So uh, I'll share something uh, about walking the verdict out here in a minute that's very important. And but that's good. It it lines up with what Rebecca was saying. She just posted, uh, "I see Yeshua as our blueprint." Yeah, of this picture of outer court participants who entered heaven to shed the blood for all peoples across all times, uh, all times, past, present, and future. The bloodlines that are cross-linked in DNA can't be separated in times in known ancestry. Yod -Heh -Vav -Heh, uh Yahweh looks for a bloodline redeemers in every generation who will stand on behalf of who? Them, us, all together. So amazing. Uh, do you feel like, Rebecca, that's us doing what you're talking mm. about? Yeah, I, I just have a, a really strong sense of, you know, the, the tabernacle, um, template where that there is outer there's inner and the holy of holies and we know that the veil has been broken like this is all just coming to me now or coming together i should say and i i just really feel like there's another there's an outer dimension that we haven't been conscious of um, as we have entered the courts and whatever we do for ourselves we may think it's for ourselves but the ramifications of what we have just done send frequencies and vibrations throughout all time because obviously god doesn't wear a watch and and we also see the the template or the picture of of the priests who didn't just go in on behalf of their family or their family lines they went in on behalf of all people's um you know who that they were representing so jesus jesus is our blueprint you know it wasn't just for his bloodline or even even for the israelites you know the 
the chosen people, but it was for the Gentiles and for every race and every person on every time. So what I'm saying, I guess, is, yes, that that sense of becoming aware that even as you do this for yourself, not only are you doing this for your family, because the ramifications run throughout the DNA and, and we understand all of that and unlock your children, your children's children and those to come. But it's even wider than that because our bloodlines are intermingled and, uh, and a cross link and our DNA, we, we can't even ever trace it really. But, um, you know, it goes back to Adam and Eve like we've been talking about, but, um, but even to understand that we're unlocking something in the universe or in the cosmos, when we ourselves take a position as a redeemer, like Christ did in the courts, it's, it, the ramifications are way beyond our understanding. So we get unlocked, but the, the chain reaction from that unlocking and those who are crowding in the outer courts, um, you know, who are still looking for a breakthrough for their generations who are yet to come um, and still looking for a redeemer and God is calling a redeemer. If we will come into the courts, we actually take the place of a, of, of a redeemer for mankind as much as we do for our own bloodline. So, yeah, just that sense that, that um, wow, this is just way bigger <laughs> and that there are many, many many who are standing in the outer courts waiting for this transaction to take place that's going to set them free as a byproduct product of us taking our place well right that's 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 great i love it uh and i believe that's happening but we need we can even take it even bigger it's for all creation yeah wow and when we looked wow. you know look what happened with the pandemic you know there was there was wildlife and, and things coming to places they haven't been in years since hundreds yeah, of years. Wow. And so creation was being healed by the acts of us, uh, what we were doing uh, during that. And, and it just hit me when you said that, because I looked at, at uh, that before too, just, just meaning, well, it's a me, me, me. I, I, I'm getting free, good, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, but then, then somebody mentioned on Facebook today, it's actually for all creation. And I'm going, that is so right. That is so good. What we're doing. And when sin entered, entered obviously sickness, you're, you're focusing in on then, you know, that's death and hell, isn't it? It's, it's the ramifications that happened yeah. with all. So this goes all the way back through all, you know, even death, you know, our lives. Yeah. 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 So, so one little case, one little court case could set entire creation free. So if we, <laughs> we begin, to, we need to get out of me, 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 look at what we do on a larger scale. And that will really help to get you excited. Like wow. Me and Rebecca, but that's really good, Rebecca. Thank you. Uh, now let's move into, let's go for a verdict. Now, when I'm doing intensives, what I do is I go around the room and I ask, who is hearing a verdict? Could be a scripture, could be one word, could be anything. And everybody is right. You know, this is training. So I'm not going to say, no, that's not correct. That's not it. Uh, I might get something different, totally different than what Paul would get or something different than what, what uh, Christine or Rebecca would get. Uh, so they're all good. They all may be personal for you. Uh, but we have to get a verdict from the judge. That's why we're here. He has to make a ruling. He has to make a decision. And, uh, and then we'll move on from there. So what are you hearing? Uh, what's God's, what's Yahweh's uh, righteous judge verdict in this particular case? Uh, Terry? Mm -hmm. uh, Kelsey. I uh, hear the word vindicated. Okay. And also I want to say as Rebe Rebecca was speaking and just before you spoke, when I heard the word vindicated, I seen um, his words and I seen a wave go out through the courtroom and I heard all creation, that the, the word vindicated went throughout the waves of his voice went out 
through all uh, creation. And so I, I wanted to say that. Awesome. Yeah. Amen. I believe it. What Patricia, what does Ezekiel 2230 say? If you can look that up and you have it, I can get it here. That's why my little phone is so handy to take into court cases with you. Ezekiel 22. Let's see. 2230 says, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Okay. What do you what do you sense from there? Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Um, I sense on there when Rebecca was speaking, like, you know, what we would she's you know, what we're doing, yeah, how it doesn't just, because to be honest, I joined this um, group so I can learn, you know, for my family, but, you know, being here with everyone is open. It's not just for me, myself and my family, but for, you know, it's bigger and deeper, like what she was explaining in that scripture, stood out to me because you know that's what we're doing we're standing in the gap yeah okay very good and yeah thank you yeah that's what we're doing so I heard um, two things actually first I heard not guilty okay and I heard first John 1 9 um, when we, if, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to cleanse us and uh, to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Good verdict. Anybody else? I heard Romans eight fifteen. All right. Do you have it pulled up? Yeah. All right. It says we. You did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out all the Father. Oh, yeah. Come on. <laughs> uh, Terry, I heard uh, cancellation. Okay. And it came out of uh, Colossians 2.14, where it says, uh, Having counseled the debt ascribed to us in the decrees that stood against us, he took it away and he nailed it to the cross. Powerful, powerful. Um, I heard it's the judge's good, it's the father's good pleasure to give good gifts to his yeah, children. Yeah, wow, yeah. That's good. Very for me, I, it became let there be light. Let there be light, yeah, it's a good one. I heard, uh, you uh, you about little children and how to overcome them because greater is he that is in you than that is he that is in the world. All right. Amen. Amen. You're blowing out my, my eardrums. <laughs> so I had to pull out my earbuds. <laughs> I need to get my earbuds here. My ear, whatever healed in there. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Henry. Thank you, Henry. Um, Terry, I see um, the, the, the evening sky last night was double rainbows, like vertical, the vibrant, vibrant colours and the majesty of the, the majesty of his everything. Yeah, wow, beautiful. I saw one too, two nights ago. Yeah, first time in a long time since. So. Remembering the promises. Yeah. All right. Let's stop there. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. You guys did an awesome job. <clears throat> now what becomes our responsibility is if you talk to Mike Parsons or anybody that teaches about the courtrooms of heaven, we, well, let me refer to what an attorney uh, told me out of Chicago. And she said, they, when, the, when the judge renders a verdict, uh, there has to be an agency to enforce the verdict or nothing changes. Is that right, Paul? 
Yep, he's shaking his head, yes. There has to be an agency to enforce the verdict or nothing changes. Guess who gets to become the agency who enforces the verdict? All those verdicts, you and me. Now, the way we do that is much like, uh, you'll probably see some immediate manifestations. If you don't, our, we have to be the agency that begins to enforce each of those verdicts. So it may require us to change our mindsets. It may require to change our, the words that come out of our mouth. Are we gonna continue in the same, uh, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Are we gonna continue the same language we did before we entered into this court case? It's not gonna work if we do that. Uh, if we continue in the same actions, we just repented of a lot of sins. If we go back and re-engage those particular sins, it's going to open up the door for what I call seven times worse to come in. So we need to stay clean and holy and pure so that Father can bless us, uh, give him the right to bless us, what Robert Henderson says, uh, so he can step back in as Father uh, off the judge's uh, seat and begin to bless us uh, with the promises as father. Uh, what I like to look at, at it as, it has to become, uh, as a governmental, legislative, and judicial son, we have to speak the language of the kingdom, not what we see out here, not what we feel in here. We have to speak to those things that are not as though they were. And when we begin to do that, we become a co-creator with Yahweh to accelerate the process of the manifestation. Some things may take a re-engagement in the courts of heaven. If you find out there's another legal right, you're welcome to go back into the courts and deal with that particular case. But, but uh, you know, I listened to when I first heard Ian Clayton teach about the courts, he said, I go to courts 20 to 80 times a day. 20 to 80 times a day. And here we have, we've been nearly two hours and we didn't even do a full court case, but it's enough for some people be, to be healed and receive a miracle. Uh, hopefully all of us, I need, a, I need a miracle, I need healing, so I'm receiving it, but I need to begin to speak to those things that are not as though they were and keep speaking, keep co-creating with Yahweh instead of going back to the old mindset and the old language that I used to speak that was in agreement with the accuser of the brethren, in essence, perpetuating darkness. We have to become a co-creator speaking the language of heaven. That's what we do as a legislative and judicial son. That's what we do after we come out of the courtrooms of heaven to begin to co-create with the verdict. And what I like to do, I wish I had my notes. Uh, walk with the spirit, the seven spirits of God uh, to begin to, to uh, follow in uh, uh, obedience to however the spirit leads you, however those seven spirits lead you. It may have to, uh, it, it can require just about anything that, that, that you need to do individually to walk out that verdict until manifestation. So we removed a lot of legal rights today. And I believe I'm going to experience some miracles. I'm going to experience some healing. I'm going to declare I'm healed of allergies. I'm going to declare I'm a, I walk in divine health. I'm going to declare uh, the blood of Jesus set me free. I can use scriptures to, to speak those things that are not as though they were. I've got some other issues I'm doing the same thing with. I don't ever want to be in agreement with that sickness. I don't ever want to be in agreement with that infirmity. I want to speak the language of heaven, co-create uh, using the language of heaven that speaks, let there be light, right? So does that make sense? And so uh, uh, it, it, uh, how long is it going to take? I can't answer that. Uh, uh, it's depending upon you involving uh, with the Lord uh, and walking in obedience and co-creating with him uh, till we see manifestation. Go to courts as many times as we, we need to. This was just a brief outline. Initially in the beginning, a lot of court cases take two to three hours like this one. But as you gain more experience, if you don't walk back into those, why could Ian Clayton do 20 to 80 court cases a day? Now I can get one thought from God 
and I can deal with it in the courts immediately. Might take 30 seconds, might take two or minutes, two or three minutes. But I didn't re-engage those same sins that I just repented of. That's an open gateway to have Satan come back in. He's got you again. If you re-engage those sins, he's got you hooked right where he wants you to. So, so uh, change your language, change your mindsets, change your motives in your heart, change your actions, and change the words that come out of your mouth. Uh, one court case took us four years until manifestation, uh, dealing with a drought up in Northern California and uh, Lake Tahoe region. Four years. And some things take a long time because we were dealing with a drought. And uh, the scripture God gave me says, I don't remember exactly where it is, but he said, uh, little by little, he said, I'll not drive out a nation in a single day, little by little. I'll drive them out unless the wild beasts come back in to occupy. Uh, you know, if he would have, he would cause this massive amount of rainfall to come and it would cause loss of lives and property damage. And that's not, you know, a, a way he would do things to restore and, and set his people free. So it took him four years and we were waiting and waiting and waiting in faith that God would one day end the drought. All of a sudden, the rains come, all the lakes up there are filled with uh, snow melt. The first winter I got there was 60 plus feet of snow, 60 feet of snow. That's a lot of snow. And then the next next three years were almost nothing, enough to open up the, the ski resorts. So there, everybody, the lake elevation in the water went down. But the last year, the fourth year, here comes the uh, the snow again, more than 60 feet again this time. And so all the weather forecasters, if you're dealing with major issues, national issues and beyond, uh, you know, I'm looking for confirmation from, from the weather people. I'm looking for confirmation from people of the world to confirm to me what we did was powerful. And what, when we got our verdict from the Lord in that court case at Lake Tahoe, here comes this little cloud that uh, began to rain right over our house. And it was almost God saying, uh, you ever hear of a God wink? He said, you guys did it. Here's your manifestation. Stand on what you did in the court case until it manifests. So four years, we never entered back into the courts. We had the word of the Lord. The Lord. We had the wink of God. Said, so you guys did it. Just stand in faith and it's going to turn around. But four years later, here comes the, the, the snow. And uh, ended the weather channel weather people were saying the drought's over, the drought's over. We had a couple of little false indicators along the way, but it took four years to do that. So never let the enemy convince you it didn't work because every time you've repented uh, of your personal sins, your transgressions and your generational bloodline iniqui iniquities, you have removed a legal right that Satan had to continue to steal, kill and destroy. Don't let him convince you it didn't work. He'll lie to you because he wants to keep you in bondage. He wants to keep you hooked into his uh, lifestyle. And really what it is, it's prison. If you look at Matthew 5, 25, uh, agree with my, your adversary quickly, unless he hands you over to the judge and judge puts you in prison. Uh, most of us are in prison. We don't even know it. And uh, so go to the courts 20 to 80 times a day if you have to. And uh, keep it simple. You'll get results. After you get a few results, you'll have some testimonies. You build a history in the courts, just like a celebrity attorney. Uh, I've been into one court that uh, uh, Yahweh called me up into the courts. He said, you better come up here because Satan is here standing against you, releasing accusations. You need to show up. So I said, okay, I'm showing up. Uh, I didn't have any idea what the court case was about. I said, well, I'm a pretty smart guy. I'm just going to go show up. That's what he said, do. Go show up. And so when I got there, I received a few accusations that was going on against me. I agreed with my adversary. I repented for me, my generational bloodline, and it was over. I never knew what the court case was about. And I thought, well, that was strange. That's not what I teach. You know, it's not going through all the the actual courtroom settings. What I've taught you, what you've seen today was just an example the basics, how to do it. Now, all you need to do is follow the Holy Spirit. You've got the protocols, you've got the guidelines. Do not make the protocols and the guidelines hard set rules of engagement. They're guidelines and they're protocols only. Every 
court case has been completely different from the other, but I always start with the way we did it here today. And I always flow uh, with Holy Spirit and he's our legal counselor. Jesus is the way, he's the truth and the life. So he, he'll lead you in the way that you need to walk in in every court case. He reveals all the truth that you need to present in your particular case. And he leads you, lead you uh, the result of that is life and life more abund abundantly. So he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. He is the one who that you need to follow more than the protocols and guidelines. The more you build history in the courts, the larger he'll expand your areas of authority, your, what you're mandated to uh, uh, legislate over. So be faithful with a little, and then you'll become rulers over much. So I hope you're blessed. Uh, does anybody have anything I'd like to share before we go? I sure appreciate you guys and joining me for two hours uh, tonight. I hope you're blessed and you got a little bit to go on now. Um, Terry, uh, often, or I've heard of the verdict being taken into the Chancellor's Court and then into the Angel's Court for distribution. Do you do anything with that or see any value with that? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I uh, I don't normally do that in beginning classes uh, because it can get really, really complicated and really, really confusing. I get powerful results just doing it simple and, and with the basics, but there's all kinds mm. of trade uh, on the sea of glass with Melchizedek and all those kind of things and the particular different courts. Don't worry about what at your beginning area levels. Don't worry about what court you're going in. Just go in through Jesus Christ and he'll get you into the right court. So don't make it a mm -hmm. mental up here process. Make it a intimate relational process with him and you'll be mm -hmm. fine. And you'll get some powerful, powerful results. Start with things simple. And then as you grow in your experience and in history, uh, you can start dealing with bigger issues. You're not gonna resolve ma major issues in one day. Uh, uh, it's gonna take a while, but start small. Take some baby steps and then you'll, you'll be expanded to tackle some larger issues. So it's powerful. There's a lot of good books out there uh, that can teach you a lot of those things. I just kind of avoid it because it's, it's uh, whether it's required or not is depending on Holy Spirit, <laughs> where he leads me. That's where I'll go. I've only been to Court of Kings, Court of Angels uh, one time and I didn't see any protocol. There was no court system there. It would just go and present my scroll, my papers from the verdict, more or less, but uh, that's for another day. So thank you, Rebecca, for bringing that up. All right, uh, so uh, start practicing. And uh, I wanna hear uh, some uh, testimonies from you. And that's why we do the Patreon, so I can help you. Uh, you might have some trouble areas. Uh, you might wanna ask a couple people from from uh, from your friends or at least a little bit of experience with this or somebody that just sees real good, senses real good. Uh, I, I, you know, I like teamwork. I like finding somebody because I see in part, I prophesy in part. It's always wise to, to have somebody with you. If you don't, it's wise to go by yourself <laughs> and follow the Holy Spirit, you know, do what it takes to get there and, and uh, I want you to communicate with me and, and share your your victories with me and and uh, we'll go from there. We're going to be starting teams real soon. This is some, just some basic stuff. We're going to, uh, with the governing board, uh, we're going to be getting some uh, situations, you know, maybe like something national or international like the, the riots. Uh, we haven't received any mandate from that yet. But we're going to get stuff like that. We're with the governing board. We're going to uh, how to to uh, pass that out to the different teams we have. And so, if you're whatever level you're on, don't limit what you can do. Well, I'm not on this Patreon tier of being a team leader. I'm not on this uh, Patreon tier to be a team member. I'm just here as a beginner. Use what you got. You don't have to be on that to start a team. You don't have to be uh, uh, any of that. That's just uh, a little more uh, uh, benefits available for people on those levels. 
And so if you're a beginner, go after it the best you can. Remember, it's not a, a mental process. It's an intimate relational process, walking with Jesus through that, walking with Holy Spirit, engaging your legal team. So uh, I hope you uh, uh, enjoyed uh, the session tonight and you're more sensitive to everything that's going around you and practice, practice, practice. You know, go in through the blood of Christ and you'll be safe. You'll be covered. And you, if you're going into courts where you're in him, you live and move and have your being, you're going to be pretty safe. And, and, and guess what? I've made tons of mistakes in the courtroom of heaven. Each time I've learned, it's been a learning process. It's part of the learning process is to make a mistake. You know, Christianity is really uh, uh, tries to avoid making mistakes because we're full of religious spirit and pride and arrogance. We don't want anybody to know we've made a mistake, but Yahweh knows all things. He's the omni, omniscient one, so he knows we make mistakes. He knows we're learning. He he, he helps you through everything you do. I actually, when I get out of a court case, I, I, I go, okay, God, uh, this was your court. How can I do things differently? How can I do things better? You can go read, 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 looking for information, or you can ask Yahweh for, for the revelation. Both are good. But I'd rather you go to, I'm always going to point you to Jesus Christ and ask him first. Inquire of the Lord is what we've been <clears throat> wanted to do a webinar on inquiring of the Lord because what happens most of the time is people ask us, they're going to ask some human being, how do we do this? And uh, God wants me to point people to Jesus Christ. So let Jesus Christ be the first go-to for you in any situation. And so uh, we bless you and honor you. And I want to hear some victories. I want to hear some testimonies. I want to hear some things break open. Nothing else like I've ever seen works like the courtrooms of heaven. And, uh, you know, we've had testimony. Go into the courtrooms of heaven topics tab in the files tab. Look for COH testimonies. Tap on that. It holds, there's probably a dozen or so testimonies on those topic tabs and file tabs. I wish I'd been recording for a long time, but uh, I didn't know about that. So we have enough there to, people have been praying for years and years and years and and getting tremendous results. I'm just in awe and wonder of the miracles and the signs and the wonders and the awe of the Lord that we that comes out of the courtrooms of heaven. So it's amazing, amazing, amazing. Anybody want to take us home in prayer? Well, I will. How about that? Where's Joan? Did she go away? I always tap in. She's here. I always tap in <laughs> Joan to pray for us. Oh, Father, Father, what a privilege. It is such a privilege to come before you and just to be with you and um, to avail ourselves of all the provisions that you've made for us, Lord. And wow, Shana, ha, ha. Wow, Shana, Yassi. And we thank you for how you delight in us and we just delight in you. Oh, Shana, who? And blessing and honor and glory that's yours now, today, and forever. Ooh. And we just receive everything that was released tonight. And we thank you for the sealing in the blood of Jesus. Wow. Shaha. And we just bless you for being our Lord or God or Yahweh. And for allowing us to be as you are. In Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. Amen. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah that's good Joan thank you always good so we'll see you next time I'll post this recording up on the Patreon site within a couple of days and welcome to watch it again and again if you want to so we'll see you next time good night everybody what? <clears throat> good night <laughs>